first thing I want y'all to do is take a look at my breakfast. <clears throat> okay, I have to change the shot. I have cantaloupe, kale, and avocado. I have kale, I have ginger. And now I have my coconut. Straight off the coconut, very important. Okay. <clears throat> well, I was eating. And I said to myself, I want to share some information. Because someone told me good food tastes bad and bad food tastes good. That was this conversation for the morning. And I said, that's an oxymoron. Because there's no way good food can taste bad and bad food tastes good because if it's bad, then that's how bad tastes. Quite simply. If that's bad food, then that's how bad food tastes. And if food is good, that's how good tastes. So the problem is your program. If you say, but how can you do this? How is it how are you able to eat this type of food? <clears throat> And I say quite often, it's the knowledge associated with the food. Not only do I know this is good for me, which should be the only reason I'm consuming it, but I know the harmful results of the other foods that I'm consuming. But bear with me. This is a spontaneous stream, and I only did it on the strength that. There's a lot of sick people, like literally sick, doing streams about health. People who are medically diagnosed as sick. People that have no legitimized information when it comes to these subject matters. But still, they speak on it and tell you that people like myself that's been doing this study for years don't know what I'm talking about. But these guys are meat eaters. And still they should be trusted with their with information, right? So let's go through it like this. One of the points of contention is where do we get the protein from? Well, understand this. When it comes to meat, meat has protein and plants have protein. Meat has insulin growth like factors, insulin like growth factors. One, okay? So IGF1, IGF1, insulin like growth factor. Insulin like growth factor. That's very important. All right? This is what you're getting when you consume animal protein. And what the insulin-like growth factor does is, amongst many of a number of atrocious things, the insulin-like growth factor causes the blood glucose level to decline. So what we're talking about is offsetting diabetes. And they tell you, you got you to gotta eat meat, particularly chicken. They tell you to make sure you eat chicken because it's high in protein. But they don't tell you that when you get the chicken, when you eat the chicken for protein, you're also getting what? Uric acid and ammonia. This is also gonna offset arthritis and a whole bunch of other <coughs> bone, uh, bone and joint disorders, all right? So one is the IGF-1. This is not things that's taught in school, so of course, if someone outside of the school system tells it to you, they tend to be a discomplexion on top of it, you have the tendency to believe we don't know what we're talking about. All right. So another thing is when you're looking at plants, plant protein is more complete. The plant protein has the nine essential amino acids that we need. Animal protein doesn't have the nine essential amino acids that you need. It's incomplete. And not only is it incomplete, you get some of those amino acids in excess, in excess, 
And not only are you getting some of these amino acids in the excess, what's happening is this. Animal protein is high in sulfur-containing amino acids. So not only are you not getting the complete amount of amino acids, you're getting a compromised rendition of the same. So on one level, plants are giving you nine major amino acids. Animal protein is not giving you all that. Secondly, the animal protein is high, okay, in what? Insulin-like growth factor, IGF-1, which causes a declination in your glucose blood level. And this clearly offsets diabetes, all right? And so keep in mind, insulin, we think of hormones, we think of diabetes. Diabetes is a hormonal disorder. So hormones give instructions. So diabetes is a hormonal disorder. It gives your body instructions for how to deal with blood sugar called glucose. It gives your body instructions, gives cells instructions that they need to open up their cells to allow the blood sugar to go in so it can metabolize properly. Without the insulin, your body's ability to metabolize is compromised or create change for the sake of energy. That's what we say right now. But again, we're going to go through protein and iron. That's what we're going to do. So for one, and I want you to look up this information so you can see what I'm saying. When you get too much of this IGF-1, this insulin-like growth factor, it offsets cancer. Okay? <laughs> Amongst many of a number of things, it offsets cancer. Secondly, if we're going to talk about protein in plants versus protein in animals, again, the protein in animals is not complete, as in the case of plants, they give you nine of the major amino acids. But who cares? If you never learned this information, yo, I'm just going to eat protein. And the places they tell you you get the protein is the meat. And as an example, chicken being one of the most popular, they tell you, hey, eat the chicken for the protein, but they don't tell you in order to eat the chicken for the protein, you also have to take an ammonia acid and uric acid, obviously acid. Now, also you need to understand that animal protein is high in sulfur containing amino acids. So what your body has to do to buffer the acidity of the sulfur containing amino acids is to leach a process called leaching, where they leach, the body leaches calcium off of the bones to buffer the acidity from the sulfur containing amino acids. Because what will happen is it'll make you more vulnerable and susceptible to various diseases. Because once your body becomes a playground for acid, it becomes a playground for parasites, microbes, bacteria, and viruses that's harmful to the body. So what your body has to do is pull calcium or leach calcium from the bones to buffer the acidity that's caused by the sulfur-containing amino acids that came from the animal protein. You get this animal protein from milk and obviously from meat. This is also going to promote diabetes. It's also going to offset diabetes. And then the excess calcium has to be stored in the kidneys, and then now you have these extra calcium deposits, which creates stones. And now you got kidney stones. Uh. <laughs> All right? Also, because you're leaching calcium off of the bones, because you're leaching calcium off the bones, guess what happens? When you leach calcium off the bones, you're compromising bone density. So the next thing that happens is osteoporosis, particularly in women, because women on their cycle are losing calcium month to month in addition to them consuming meat that's high in self-containing amino acids. So now this, this loss of calcium is twofold. And this loss of calcium is twofold. And now once she has osteoporosis, the next thing that goes is her hearing called bone conduction loss of hearing. It's called bone conduction loss of hearing. You can look this stuff up. But you can continue to eat your, or uh, get your source of proteins from animals if you choose. 
Next conversation. Iron and plants versus iron and animals. Let's do it like this. Iron and animals called heme iron. They don't teach you that in school. It's called heme iron. All right? Mostly found in the muscles. So you got heme iron, and then you got the iron that's in plants. Dark green leafy vegetables called iron fluorine. This is very important because one thing is your pineal gland is magnetized to fluoride. And so what happens is iron fluorine is normally covalently bonded. And so the fluoride brings the iron to the pineal gland. That iron hits the pineal gland and helps the pineal gland do its job. When you take in heme iron from animals, you don't get that composite of iron and fluoride. You wind up just getting fluoride, all right? And too much fluoride creates too much deposits in the pineal gland that creates phosphate crystals, and therefore it causes your pineal gland to be calcified. Now it's being hard for you to sleep. You'll be doing a lot of snoring, because when the pineal gland is calcified, the ability to produce melatonin that helps you rest keeps your skin clear, keeps you intuitive, it goes on decline because your pineal gland is calcified. Your ability to lucidly dream, you're going to sleep having dreams and not even remembering what you're dreaming about. You're just waking up every day. And this is normal to the average person because insanity and sickness has been normalized. <laughs> These are facts. So what happens is, Iron fluorine from dark green leafy vegetables is the type of iron you want. You don't want, pardon me. People always calling me. Pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. Okay. Oh, yeah. information we tend to be magnetized to person places and things that correspond with it so it's real but uh yeah you just go to i am brother polite on youtube or you can go to brother polite on instagram and dm me and then i can give you all the different classes and everything i'll be happy. are you a doctor no i'm not i just i was cured of diabetes from my teacher dr Sebi, when i was 20 turning 21 and i never changed the way i ate since so what is your diet you obviously oh i don't even know me no. None whatsoever. Well, well, I'm saying get the protein from the plants. But what about the like there are two types of people type one and type two, right? Yes. Well, that's the thing. That's how tricky this is. Like when you go to the store, sometimes you see water that says has fluoride and flor uh, doesn't have fluoride. When you see those options. The consumer who unsuspecting as they are, they'll probably get the one that has fluoride because the other one doesn't. So a lot of times it seems like if it does have something, we need to get it because they just told us it has it. So with the plants, when they say, oh, the plants doesn't have this, it makes you feel like, well, I need to get it from over there. But the problem is the protein that's in the animals has the insulin-like growth factor. That's what it's called. And so when you take in animal protein, it's a company with a lot of clauses they don't tell you. So one, and you're supposed to get nine amino acids when you're attempting to consume protein. Plants have the nine amino acids, it's complete. When you take protein from animals, it doesn't have the nine amino acids. So it's incomplete. And then what it does have, when you take plant protein, when you take animal protein, is something called IGF-1, right? And insulin is instructions that's when insulin is. gives instructions right okay. so when you take igf1 it's giving your body instructions to get bigger than you're supposed to and then what happens is when you eat plants let's say you get a bunch of green you get to a point where you're like i don't want to throw up or you be like man this is enough i just can't eat this much green 
that's on purpose because the plants are telling you you've hit your sugar limit or you've hit your protein limit or you hit your iron limit. When you take iron from animals, he, and you take protein from animals, their protein and iron doesn't let you know you've had enough. And so you can get too much of the insulin like growth factor or you can get too much of the heme iron that's in animals. And when you don't know you're taking too much of the iron, then it's an excess amount. And the excess amount tilts the scales and offsets stroke when you have too much uh, animal iron, iron in general. Yeah, stroke last year. <laughs> That is young. And so it's a lot of times, like I said, with plants, you can only eat but so much dark green vegetables before your body is like, you just get this feeling, ah, oh, that's enough. You can eat a bunch of string beans and some kale, right? And there'll be a point where you can like, you leave the rest on the plate like I had enough. Because it's telling you, you got the optimal amount. Okay? That doesn't happen from animal proteins because our body isn't compatible with the idea. It's just incompatible with the idea. So you'll just eat and never stop. None of that. You don't want to deal with none of that. But it's a good transition. If you're coming out of meat and then you do the fish, and if you do eat fish, you do your best. Particularly as a woman, you don't want to do too much of the tuna or the salmon because those are fatty fish and it sets off fibroids because it's high in estrogen. And when there's too much estrogen, when the estrogen level is too high, it creates fibroids. So you, you, you have those too. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it's really the food we need. And then they give you medicine to treat you, but not cure you. Because the cure is it just changing the diet for the most part. That's the number one thing we can do to create a, a better situation for the body to do what it does. But it's hard for the body to combat something that you're endorsing or promoting. You know? Like, if, if I run a channel and I, and I tell you uh, we have to stop sexualizing women, but at the same rate, on the same channel, I'm constantly showing you naked women at the same time, it's a conflict of interest. So with the body, we, we want to be healthy and we'll eat medicine, but they won't tell us to change the foods that we ate to get us into the problem in the first place. <laughs> so, so it's a contradiction. It's like, okay, so this, this medicine is just going to make the pain subside for a little bit of time. Right? And then I'm going to go back to the pain. But if I got rid of the, the crisis that created the event, then the body could be like, okay, we see clearly this person's giving me the opportunity to heal myself. Because it's not so much that the body doesn't have the ability to do what we want it to do for healing. It's we're in the way of it. Because we're constantly doing the thing that put us in that situation. And then we compound interest with the medicine. So that's, that's why... It's always important when people do the debate over plant protein and animal protein or plant iron and animal iron. First thing is, when they have that debate, first thing you say is, what's, what's the name of the iron that we get from animals? And what's the name of the protein that we're getting from animals? And then, what's the name of the protein we're getting from plants? And what's the name of the protein we're getting from animals? If they don't have the answer to that, then they really don't know what they're talking about. Because the name tells us what's going wrong. If you say heme iron, and you say iron fluorine, iron fluorine is in dark green leafy vegetables, and heme iron is in meat. That means, oh man, you must know something. If you know those two words, then you know, I need to stop eating that, that I need to stop using animals as a source of protein, and as a source of iron. Because one, I'll eat it in excess and never know. Uh, if you take animal protein, even from milk, right? Animal protein's in it. So if you take animal protein, then we know that the amino acids, because when protein is broken down, the digestive system turns it back into amino acids. The amino acids that make up the proteins that's in animals contain sulfur. And then that causes the body's pH or potential hydrogen to become acidic. And then what the body has to do to stop all this excess acidity is leach or take calcium off of your bones to balance out the pH. But now you're sacrificing your bone integrity because you're eating things that's causing the acidity in your body. And then now the body has to find out which, where to dump all this extra calcium that it's using to buffer or polarize this experience of acid from the sulfur containing amino acids. Now you see, if I take protein from a plant, I'm getting my non-amino acids and I don't have to worry about my body ripping calcium off of my bones. 
Yeah, and what happens, you can tell if you're calcium deficient just by looking at your fingernails because you'll have these circles right here. By the cuticles, you'll see crescent shapes. Uh, if it's like a little white at the cuticles, like you have your nail polish, right? But when you look at your, your nails, like your nail bag, if it's oval shaped and white over here, if it's a discoloration, that's your body telling you you're low on calcium. And most times when women are on their cycle, that'll be the time that they'll see those crescent shapes right by their fingernails. And that tells you that you need to get more calcium. Now the problem is, you might be getting a lot of calcium, but it might be your source of calcium that's causing you the problems. Because your source of calcium comes with compromise, which demands that you gotta keep taking more calcium. Because if you're getting calcium from food that's also acidic, then your body has to take the same calcium that it took in, plus calcium from your bones, to buffer it, to try to get rid of it. And then also, like, when we take milk, we say, oh, milk is high in calcium, right? But the ratio of calcium has to be one-to-one -one with magnesium. If that's done that way, so you don't have to be subject to too much acidity, right? Because calcium by itself is just not good for the bones. Calcium has to be accompanied by magnesium, right? Vitamin D. And we know vitamins are produced from what? Sun exposure. If it's in a pill, it's not alive. And it, and it doesn't biologically, it doesn't come from a source that biologically embeds just like light does. Like this light is nutrition. But most of us, we have the type of lifestyle that demands we're at work when the light is out and we're off of work when the light is gone. And so we have to get supplements to supplant the lack of light activity. So when we get vitamins, we look at the word vita or vitality, right? And they look at the word amen, which is the sun god in Egypt. Amen was the sun god. So they call him amen Ra. So we see vitality from sun. So we get our sustenance or our vitality from the sun. So whenever the sun comes in contact with our skin, it produces vitamins naturally. Well, you're not too far away from those people who uh, eat the sunlight. <laughs> you know, I don't think that you have to just the that's a fact. I feel like there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, that's that's you know when people talk about uh, what they should eat or what they should have in their diet. Firstly, I always say sun. Yes, air. Air. That's right. Water. So, what type of water are we drinking? Right? Is it alkaline? And not only alkaline, was it turned into alkaline water, or was it naturally alkaline? So it's important to read. All right, what's that bottle of water you be drinking? Is, is it not? That's, that's one of them. It looks like a, um, they don't even, the label's like on the inside of the bottle, actually. Oh, okay. It's at 8.0 alkaline water. But what you want to do is you want to look and see if the, the water was made alkaline in a factory. or Because what they'll do is infuse it with electrolytes and add minerals to it. And then it loses its natural composition because now it's manufactured alkaline water, right? And just because the water's alkaline doesn't necessarily mean it's good because it might still be high in metals. So you want to know if the water's you want to know if the water's filtered and if it's naturally alkaline. So um, yeah, one of those waters in there is at this. They got like three of them in there. Yes, you want to look for that. You want to look and see did they turn this water alkaline? <laughs> or was it naturally alkaline through nature, right? Because we're talking about negative hydrogen eons, right? And in, in a biology world, negativity is positive and positivity is negative. So you actually want your water to be filled with negative hydrogen eons. And that's why it's good to shake it before you drink it, because anytime you shake any liquid, it actually creates some form of alkalinity. You know, negative hydrogen eons cling to the corners of the bottle whenever you shake it. So, you want to have naturally alkaline water, and hopefully it's filtered from metals, or it comes from a source that doesn't have harmful metals in it. Like I said, not just good enough to have alkaline water. You want to have alkaline water that doesn't have harmful metals in it. So some people be like, "Hey, this is 8.5," but it could be 8.5, 8.5, well, uh, with some mercury in there, and some arsenic. You know what I'm saying? And normally, if you taste like a metal, metal type flavor from the water, then you know there's uh, harmful metals in there. 
so you actually can kind of you actually become more sensitive to it if you don't drink too many different flavors because what happens every every uh, 10 to 14 days